Savage Stone Age. Hello and welcome to the news at when. When, around seven million years ago, when there was no human life on Earth. But over in Africa, some chimpanzees are starting to develop some rather familiar traits. Here with more details on these incredible developments is the oldest human I've ever met, Bob Hale, with the Human Report. Bob. Thank you, Sam. I think. Well, it's a whopping seven million years ago. Here we are in Africa, and here comes your family. Well, OK, they're chimpanzees, but these particular ones look a little different to all the others. There's something about the face, or maybe it's the teeth, or perhaps the I'm evolving t-shirt. Whatever it is, there's a subtle difference that might just be the first tiny steps towards becoming you and me. Well, you anyway, I'm much better looking. And if we zip forward a million years, we find a series of these tiny changes have combined to make a chimp that's no longer a chimp at all. Yes, it's a roar in Tuganensis, a whole new species that boldly stands on its own two feet by standing on its own two feet. And given another million years to practice, they're even walking around, teaching their tiny brains to put one foot in front of the other, like this. And, oh, more difficult than it looks, isn't it? But by three million years ago, they've got this walking business sorted. And how do we know this? Because we found the skeleton of the southern ape, nicknamed Lucy, just like my first girlfriend. And she's 1.2 meters tall, with short legs, a hooked jaw, and a brain the size of an orange, just like my first girlfriend. But more importantly, Lucy's skeleton proves that she walked on two legs most of the time, just as we do today. Uh, that's Lucy the ape skeleton, of course, not Lucy my first girlfriend, who is alive and well and has a successful radio career. So the apes are now upright, but they're still basically apes. But not for long! Yes, a trifling two and a half million years ago, up popped Homo habilis, Latin for handyman, and a lot cheaper than the guy who put in my bathroom. Yes, he starts using tools, and as such, he's the first true human. A fact I will now celebrate using this early party pop. Needs work. Anyway, our little handyman switches to a protein-rich diet, which helps him to grow a bigger brain and design better tools so he can catch better food, leading to bigger brains and better tools and better food and bigger brains and better tools and better food and bigger breasts. Sorry, yeah, got a bit stuck. Anyway, as the African forests recede into desert, mankind has to evolve just to keep up. So about 1.9 million years ago, Homo ergaster appeared, and since the desert is so hot, he loses all his fur. Though we blurred that out to save his embarrassment. Meanwhile, over in Asia, Homo ergaster's cousin has appeared, Homo erectus, and he has discovered fire, which means he can now cook meat, which helps him to eat better and grow bigger brains and make better tools and kill better food. And... No, 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 not the stick. Anyway, Homo erectus is gradually replaced by Homo heidelbergensis, who at over two metres tall has a very long stride, which helped him to stroll all the way across into Stone Age Europe. He is right-handed, like me, has developed a primitive language like what I done do, and likes to stab animals with spears, which is where we differ. But gradually, Heidelbergensis evolves into a chap you've probably heard of, Neanderthal Man, who's short, squat, and awful at running, a bit like my second girlfriend, who I'd rather forget. And Neanderthals have pretty big brains, but you'd never know it from their hunting technique, which is to jump on huge animals and try and wrestle them to death. A great spectator sport. And what do you know? Here come some spectators! Yes, it's our furless friend from Africa, who has now evolved into... Ba -ba 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 -ba! Homo sapiens, just like you and me. Yes, the search for food has led us up out of Africa and into Europe. So now we have both Neanderthals and Homo sapiens in the same place at the same time fighting for the same food. But not for long! With better hunting techniques and needing less food to fuel their smaller bodies, Homo sapiens have the edge. And a mere 24,000 years ago, the Anatholes die out, leaving us Homo sapiens behind. So, there we have it. Evolution in a nutshell. And what's to say it stopped there? Perhaps in the future our thumbs will evolve to text quicker, or our ears to listen to louder music. Or maybe Sam will finally develop a way to check her emails and do her nails at the same time. What do you reckon, Sam? No comment. Ah!